Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, this video is going to introduce the aim and scope of the course of instrumentation and measurements. You can follow the videos in the playlist for complete course or you may jump to a specific topic. As far as this video is concerned, it is going to explain prerequisites of learning instrumentation and measurements, the extent to which I'll cover the contents, and the motivation behind understanding the need of instrumentation and measurement systems. So without further ado, let us dive into the world of instrumentation and measurements. So what comes to your mind when you hear the word instrumentation? Instrumentation means the use of instruments. Now you must be wondering what instruments are. Well, that depends on the field you are in. For a doctor, instruments are different than a musician. And for engineers, instruments are totally different. For engineers, instruments can be anything that helps us measure something. For example, a simple ruler is an instrument because we can measure length using it. Or a voltmeter is an instrument that allows us to measure voltage in some part of the electric circuit. So, these are the instruments and use of these instruments is called instrumentation. An example of instrumentation can be as simple as a temperature sensor installed in the air conditioner at your home. This sensor is used to measure the current temperature of the air present in your room. We can say that we have done instrumentation to measure the temperature of the air. So I hope now you have at least a basic idea what instrumentation is. Therefore, let us move forward. The next word that makes up the title of this course is measurements. It would now be easy for me to explain what measurements means. As you know, we are going to use instruments to measure something, but how we are going to use an instrument is called measurements. The way, the method, or the technique through which we are going to use the instrument is called measurement. That is, how the instrument is going to measure something. What are the considerations? What are the details? What are the do's and don'ts? So, dear learners, I am going to focus on these two primary aspects while taking you through this course. This is the reason I have divided this course into two categories. In the first one, we are going to understand what are the principles of measurements, how we should take measurements, what things we should consider while taking measurements, how we can increase the accuracy and precision and reliability of the measurements, how we can process the measured data to make it useful. And these are some basic questions that I'll be focusing on in this part of the course. However, the second category will focus on the instruments. I'll try to cover a range of instruments, how they are constructed, why they are constructed, where these instruments are used, why these are used, what is the state of the art, and what characteristics do it have. We will try to cover instruments ranging from temperature sensors to flow sensors, gyroscopes to encoders, rain sensors to moisture sensors, and many more. So learners, buckle up because you are going to receive huge amount of information which you should digest at a fast pace. However, if you feel you are being left behind, do contact me through my email, comments or Google Classroom so that I can answer your query individually. All in all, you are going to learn these broad things once you are done with this course starting from the need for instrumentation and measurements and going through various technologies and considerations related to the measurements and all the way up to different types of sensors and state of the art in those categories. I'll try my best to deliver knowledge as close to the practical world as possible so that you can easily relate things with your everyday life and better understand how things are working. Just to motivate you or scare you, these are some of the sensors we are going to study. These include gyros, piezoresistive sensors, light sensors, resistive sensors, IR sensors, and many more. You are going to use these things in the lab portion of this course, but I guess 
that must wait a bit. Before you dive into the course formally, make sure you have reasonable understanding of electronic devices and circuits because we are going to use that knowledge, especially in the lab portion of this course. Moreover, you may contact your teacher in his office hours during advertised office contact hours or via email, YouTube comments or Google Classroom. I'm going to use two textbooks for most of the information. However, several online resources will also be used. I'll share references of resources other than these books at the end of the corresponding topics. This is everything for this introductory video with the hope that you now have a clearer picture in the, your mind that how we are going to proceed and what you are going to learn. I would say good luck and goodbye.